electronic steering and suspension. Uh, this is test nine in the steering and suspension series that I do here. And, um, so basically, <clears throat> what I'll start out saying here about this thing, you've got an air compressor, and I'm going to show you one. This is an air compressor. This is the air compressor from the steering and suspension on a Lincoln. And you see the little cooling fins. There's a little piston in here. It's real cute as all get out if you ever took a, one of these apart. It looks just like a little piston out of an engine. But this little this motor, this electric motor, spins that piston and it pumps air out here. Now there's solenoids that look almost like a big fat white fuel injector in the top of these air springs. The air springs are bags. You go, how many of you guys have seen Lincolns or some of these cars? Like Expeditions will have air suspension on the rear. This pump on those will be up in, uh, above the spare tire area up in there. On the uh, Lincolns and the cars, it's in the front on the left side under the hood. And you'll hear this thing running sometime. Now, we've got one car. How many of you all know which car it is that we've got that's got air suspension on it here at the college? Crown Vic. The Crown Vic, because if we only get one Crown Vic. How many Crown Vics we got? What color? The, blue one. the black one. The black Crown Victoria has got air suspension. Now, what happens if you don't turn off the air suspension and you raise it up? The ride height sensor thinks that it's setting too high and it lets all the air out of the airbags. And then when you set it down, it squats down on the dadgum lift and you look like a dummy because you didn't turn off the air suspension before you raised it up. Now, you know, in the, in the shop, you know, it makes the, the other mechanics, when they see you raise one up that you didn't turn off the air suspension on, and it comes down and is sitting on the lift and you can't get the arms up from under, you can just tell it's squatting down because the springs have had all the air let out on them. And they point at you and they go, whoa, because oh, 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 you're a dummy. Now on your expedition, it's up in here on the right side, uh, under the, by your, the passenger's right foot, there's a switch under there, click. In the Crown Victoria, it's in the trunk, right? But that's the air compressor for that. That's what that does, and I'll throw that at people, and you can pass it around and look at it. That dryer, there's a dryer on there, uh, too, that dryer that you're looking at. And uh, somewhere over here, and I don't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time looking for these, but there are some, um, uh, here you go, right here. Go pass these around, too. I still can't believe that I can hold them. Huh? Yeah, he's, he's totally stunned. See these little... These little things right here, they look kind of like an injector, don't they? And what they are, well, look at them. It's a little solenoid with a two-wire connector going to it, and it got O-ring, and it got a plate. You see what I'm saying? And except on it, what they do is they let air go through to those springs. That's what these are. And now these solenoids are operated by the... They've actually, believe it or not, these solenoids are uh, grounded, hardwired to ground in the... Computer sends power out to them instead of the other way around, like what you're used to. And that's how these things work. So there's those two things for what it's worth. Uh, if you ever have air springs leaking on one that's got the air springs on it, you can take the air spring off of it and you can air it up out there on the bench and you can hold it under water and see if it's leaking. And sometimes it leaks. Let me answer my stupid telephone. Hello. Hey. Just fine, Harry. Oh, I thought you were somebody else. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I need a PO to Stempf Automotive. S T E M P F. Stempf Automotive. He found a lower control arm for a 95 Nissan that's big bucks everywhere else, and they got it real cheap. Brand new. We like that. Yes, the, be the real deals. Three six. Okay, I got it, and I'll give it to him, and I appreciate it, Marlena. Bye -bye. Okay, that was our PO that we're going to give the guy for that uh, thing. Right there. All right, let's go down here. The air compressor assembly has got the compressor, a solenoid vent valve, an internal relief valve, and compressor uh, generation air dryer over there. Um, okay, it's a single cylinder electric motor driven unit. You, there's a cutaway. On the handout, there. there's no point in showing you because you've already seen it. The solenoid vent valve on the compressor cylinder here, and it shares a common electrical wiring harness connector with the compressor. So you plug the wires in, you're actually plugging in the uh, compressor, and you're plugging in the solenoid. Now, the, co the computer 
that watches the ride height of the vehicle and adjusts it accordingly is actually uh, powering up the compressor when it needs it, and it's also powering up the uh, uh, solenoid whenever it needs to vent the thing out. So you got, uh, it's actually interesting because on some of these that have four wheel air suspension on them, they've got each solenoid is going to be controlled separately. If one corner of the car, like if you put a bunch of bags of feed in the right rear corner of your Lincoln, it would pump just that corner up. See what I'm saying? You can also uh, go in there and there's a setting using the factory scan tool where you can say if you're, well, let's say the car is not sitting level. I mean, because it's got, you know, it's got the ride height sensors for everywhere on those kind. And you say, well, I'm going to, I don't like the way this car is sitting. So it has you to measure from the, remember I told you about this before, from the fender to the bottom of the wheel. You're going to measure from there to there, right? And you're going to tell the machine what you have. And it's going to fix it. It's going to use the numbers you put in that machine, and it's going to adjust the air suspension and give it a new zero everywhere so it sits nice and level. Now, that's like on your Mark 8s and that kind of thing, you know, the Lincolns. And, the, and those cars are pretty cool. You might have seen the, the commercial on the Mark 8 where these thing drives up here, and there's a concrete barrier. Dunk, and the top of the car touches the concrete barrier. And the guy backs the car up, and he goes down the test track. And here he comes toward that concrete barrier. And he's going like 60, 70 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, and he goes under it. <laughs> because what happens is the car lowers when you get to a certain speed. I mean, that's what they can do with air suspension. You see what I'm saying? That's cool stuff. You just know he's going to rip the whole top off of that doggone car because he's touched. It's a commercial. You've seen that commercial? You've seen it, haven't you? How come nobody else has seen it? I guess me and Lawrence have been before you all this time. All right. So, all right. So, but anyway, uh, but you got, so what you got, I remember. I'm telling you this. You got a uh, you got a computer, and you've got ride height sensors right here that are reading the height. Like on the one on the on the Crown Victoria, we got the only airbags this got is on the back. It's got regular suspension on the front. On the Expeditions, typically all you got is on the back. You see on some of these Mark the Lincolns and all, it'll be. Uh, the the springs aren't working right, or there's an air leak somewhere. The compressor's gone bad, and they'll be just sitting down all the way low. I got it fixed where even if the air springs are totally flat, you can still drive the car, but it rides like a wagon. Okay. All right, so you've got, where your friend is going to put two, you got airbags, you know, in the back, and I'm just throwing them close together just because. And they got wires going to those. And this computer actually is controlling those while it monitors the ride height sensor. The ride height sensor is actually the feedback for these air springs. And it's got the compressor here and when it fires up the compressor, it sends air through those solenoids into the spring. So it can actually let air out or it can pump air in. Right? You got it? So just that's basically the way that works. Uh, the air is a pneumatic spring. Air springs a pneumatic spring. It's a big rubber thing. It acts like a balloon filled up with air. And it inflates or deflates each air spring by increasing or venting system air. Now, like I say, it does the whole back. and I mean, the whole both of them at the same time on that uh, Crown Victoria we got. Uh, there's nylon airlines or hard plastic. Uh, they distribute the air from the compressor to the solenoid. So what do you think about that? You know, you can, they can be damaged. They can come up. The way that you, incidentally, you might notice the little orange ring on these solenoids and all. Watch this. This little orange ring, if you ever have to take that loose. Now, it seems simple enough, but whenever you push the line in there, it just sticks. When you're going to pull it out, you push that orange ring, and it just pulls out. <laughs> but sometimes... And, and it's the same way on that dryer. you got two lines coming out of that dryer. See that on this one. There's four lines coming out of the dryer on the one that's got four. But anyway, it's sitting here, and uh, when you sometimes when you push it, the line won't come out, and you fight with it and all that kind of thing. But that's how it's supposed to work. You push that little orange thing, and it just pulls right out. It's pretty slick. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so you got adjustable damping shocks and struts. Now, I told you a little bit about this the other day. Uh, the difference between them and the con conventional shock absorber is that the dampened strut takes the place of the conventional strut, and it's got a mechanical valve assembly that enables switching between soft and hard. Now, remember, I told you, like on some of your Thunderbird Super Coupes, they'd have it if you went to, if you accelerated the car hard enough, it tightens your suspension and makes it harder. If you make a, if you got more than 400 pounds of uh, braking pressure, it's going to close a switch and it's going to tighten the suspension. 
if you're going, if you're cornering quick, like if it feels you, it's got a steering wheel rotation sensor, if you jerk the wheel, it tightens the suspension to make the car have harder suspension just when you're cornering. Mm -hmm. See, so, you know, and it's got that little valve down inside there, and up on top of the shock on the ones, now there's General Motors has got some, you know, fancy, really expensive stuff that they can juice it up and it gets harder, you know, and that's a, you know, that's a, uh, something that, you know, they actually had some in a pan that they'd show you, and then when they power it up, it gets solid, and this kind of thing. But uh, the way that the Forbes did it is they had a little solenoid that looked kind of like this, and it was hooked to a little thing that's on, on the top of the shock. It was a little double D, which a double D looks like that. You ever seen a, you ever seen anything like that? Like, like the top of a shock absorber that you got to hold to take the nut off? Mm -hmm. It's a double D. This one's a little bitty double D, and it's got this solenoid, and this solenoid has got four wires going to it. Now, why would a solenoid need four wires going to it? Two of them are going to give it position information, and two of them are going to drive the solenoid. Right? So one of them has got a switch between them, and that's whenever the thing is in soft, the switch is closed. When it's hard, it's open, or vice versa. I don't remember which. But the fact is, you put power and ground in there, it's going to go click, click. It, it don't move slowly. It goes from one to the other on the ones that I've checked. Okay, going down through here, there's a plate. All right? And there's another plate, and it's sealed on either side. And if you look at these two plates, imagine two plates with holes in them. And if you turn one plate so you stop up half the holes, the oil that's having to go between these two every time the shocks move is, on, is going to be harder for it to go. It's a little thick blister and type oil, kind of like in a viscous fan clutch or something. And, of course, you've got nitrogen-charged shocks, too. And, you know, like I always tell you, those pick on these... Uh, the textbooks always like to say that the nitrogen charged, I mean, that the shock absorbers don't hold the weight of the car, but these nitrogen charged shocks do. You'll see front wheel drive cars like Tauruses and stuff, then they'll be sitting an inch lower because the shocks are gone. If you put new shocks on it, they'll raise them up an inch just because you put new shocks on it. So if, take that with a grain of salt when your textbook says shocks don't hold the weight of the car because they do. Even the ones that are just plain old nitrogen charged shocks. And you know that when you turn those new ones and how they come out. I mean, they're pushing, you know, that's what they're doing. You used to have to pull them, you know, but now they come out by themselves. Anyway, that's how they work. This little thing right here moves. And I built a little box with a rocker switch and an and a indicator light. The indicator light was telling me about the switch in there, how it went over coming off. And the other two wires, I could drive that thing back and forth. So when I would hook my little box up to it, like if I had a code that I was getting for one of these shock actuators not doing right, I got my little, I had a little connector that was just right, like an oxygen sensor connector. And I wired it up so that when I plugged it in, all I had to do, and I built a lot of tools like that, I just plug that sucker in and I could operate that little actuator. Click, 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 click. And if it operated right, then my little on and off light came on. You know, you could bounce the car and click it and bounce it again. And if that's working, if this little sucker's working, it's got two screws holding it on top of the shock. Then uh, you know that you got wiring problems between here and the computer. See, I mean, you just think outside the box. You know what I mean? All right. Thanks for doing that. So, all right, start paying attention to your uh, stuff here. We're going to get to it in a minute. On the service switch, I told you about that. You got your own off switch. It's like a little rocker switch. You'll click, click. It says off. If you open the trunk on the Crown Vic, it's on the left side, and you'll see a yellow sticker that talks about air suspension switch. If you forget and leave the air suspension switch off, there'll be a warning light inside. And, uh, and so on and so forth. Now, if you... Uh, uh, if you ever forget and fumble the ball and, and, and crank the thing up and, I mean, you know, let it squat down, all you do is fire it up. You know, if you open and close the door, it triggers it to start leveling itself. Uh, something else they do, when the door's open, it won't do any leveling. Then why do you suppose they would make it that way? No, not really. If, uh, if the door is open on the car, what if you open the door and it decides to lower the car for whatever reason? Let's, 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 let's think about it this way. Let's say that, uh, you know, Bessie Mae loaded a big bunch of heavy-duty groceries or dog food or whatever in her back of her car, and it tried to squat down, and then it leveled it back up. All right, so then she pulls up here, and she opens the door on her car, and she leaves the door open on her car while she pops the trunk, and she gets all this stuff out. Okay, and then the car, what does it do? It, it raises up, right? Okay, so now let's say the ride height sensor tells the computer I need to lower the car because it's too high. But she's got her door open. And her door is open. Oh, and right here, we've got the dead gum curb over here or the grassy knoll or whatever. 
And if it decides to lower the car and the door bites into the dirt, it can damage the door. It can do all. So if you open the door, it's going to kill that. Now, this handout doesn't even tell you that, but if you open that door, it's going to kill that. I thought I smelled something. There's a uniform, man. What are you doing there, dude? Yeah, are you a pretty good guy yeah, most of the time? I didn't say it was a bad smell. What I used to do when I'd go to the country store and somebody would walk in that I knew and they didn't see me but I saw them, I'd turn around and I'd hear them walk up behind me and I'd say, I smell something. Oh, hey, Mike, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> well, put, put the appropriate coffee on my desk in there. Yeah, we appreciate it. You want to hear a smart blonde joke? What is it? Good luck. I ain't never heard one. Ha 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 ha. You can't get much past him. All right. There's an analog height sensor in the Now, the number of height sensors used on a vehicle depends on the type of electronic suspension it's going to have. And the height sensors are connected to the frame at one end, the other end is going to be hooked to the... You've seen these height sensors. You've actually seen them, believe it or not. Now, there's don't get them confused with the ride height, uh, I mean with the uh, height sensing proportioning valve that's to do with your brakes. Now think about this. Wesley. I thought Wesley was going to be here four hours a day. He said he's going to shoot himself in the head. Right here. Or somebody said that. Nice. You said that. Okay, you got to, what you got to, sometimes you'll see something that'll be really simple. You'll be so very simple. You'll see a little thing with a lever on it, and it'll have a ball, and it'll be hooked to the frame. This will actually be on the axle, and that'll be on the frame. So whenever the frame squats down, this is going to change, and it's got wires coming out of it. I was going to tell you where it is. Yeah, and that's and it's going to correct that. That's the feedback. You see what I'm saying? So it, I'm going to change the, the height of the vehicle, and I'm going to get feedback from my ride height sensor. And a lot of the times, it's just an on-off thing. You'll have a, if you actually hooked up, and I've, I built a little tool for that too. You hook the you hook these suckers up to the little the ones that I would use. You hook them up, and if it was too low, there would be one light on, which one of these wires would be grounded. And if it's too high, the other would be grounded. So they want it where neither light's burning. <laughs> see where I'm going with that? I mean, it's not hard to do. It's not, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, that would be a digital one. But the analog sensor, height sensors, though, they supply a continuous voltage signal to the suspension control module, and they're like a TP sensor. Those are. The other ones are kind of like digital. They just got on off. The digital ones are on off. You got to remember, this is digital. And this is, you know, the analog is one where you just go like, uh, you know the ones where you turn and the lights go dim and bright? That's a, that's a, that's analog, and this is digital. And you would think the uh, the digital one is the one that sounds really high tech, but think about it. All for own is not high tech, is it? Unless you're talking about an eight bit binary code, and then it gets a little more high tech because that's you know you got eight on or all sensors. Uh, the suspension control module uses a door signal for various system strategies, and it, it prevents venting or maintaining current height right out when the door is open. And it returns to normal operation when you close the door. So sometimes you're going to close the door and open it. So you're looking at speed sensor. You got to sometimes it's, you know, it, you know it's going to basically going to do stuff with the vehicle speed signal. It's going to get the speed signal input from the vehicle speed sensor or other modules or the multiplex network. And so the vehicle speed sensor, you know, is something we've talked about before. So we don't need to go into that. That's you know a bunch of nonsense there. Uh, then you got your steering wheel rotation sensor, which I got the coolest picture of a steering wheel rotation sensor right there. It's a cool little steering wheel rotation sensor, which I've already drawn it for you guys, so y'all can suck it up. Okay. All right, so there you go. Y'all like to suck it up, don't you? Okay. Acceleration signal. You got to, that provides to the PCM, it, uh, the PCM sends it to the module, and that activates the suspension to the hard damping position to reduce front end lift. In other words, you don't want it going, boom, up in the front end, do you? Like that, uh, Nissan that I saw you riding in on your Facebook page where you picked the front wheels up off the ground and turned it off. You don't want to do that. You don't want to take it level, right? All right. It, it derives that signal from the throttle position sensor if it's above 90% or from the mass airflow sensor. Now, where are you going to get information that's that exact anywhere else, right? Brake sensor, brake pedal on off sensor. What's the brake pedal on off sensor? The boost sensor. You know what that is? Brake pedal on or off sensor? Yeah. Boo. The boost switch. Would that be like a stoplight switch? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, think about it. Boo. Brake on off. Either the brake on off. <laughs> Boo. That's the boo sensor. You know, brake on off. I'm serious. It's no, that's what the Ford calls it, the boo sensor. Brake on off sensor. But now a lot of the times you'll have a sensor that doesn't, they'll have one that applies to the park brake and have a separate one that gives cruise control information and does other things. So that sometimes you'll, it's a 12-volt signal. 
some air suspension systems use a transmission input for height adjustment and, and kneel strategies. What's kneel? That's what I was talking about when you're going down. No, whenever the car lowers, going down the roof, mm -hmm. uh, it shoots oh. under there. And that's spliced into the that digital transmission range sensor circuit of the transmission sensor and its hardware. Okay, now you got a ride control select switch. That's a good thing. And uh, you got transfer case settings. Some, now, we're getting down to four-wheel drive stuff. And you remember your first uh, question here has got to do with control module on four-wheel drive vehicles with ride control switches. The shocks from firm to soft when four-wheel drive is engaged. Okay. Does it or does it not? The switch allows the driver to manually select hard shock damping. Some four-wheel drive vehicles with ride control suspension use the 4x4 four four mode switch as an input to the control module. To, listen now, to switch the shocks from soft to hard ride when the vehicle is in 4x4 four four mode. Now, think, look at this. Um, the, four, uh, the control module on four-wheel drive switches with ride control switches uh, shocks from firm to soft when four-wheel drive is engaged, right? Some four-wheel air suspension systems will increase vehicle ride height uh, to when the mode is switches in 4x4. Four four. So it will uh, switch them from soft to hard when it's in 4x4, four four, won't it? Huh? Yep. yep. According to you, what you talk? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Off-road switch lets the driver activate the air suspension system to raise the vehicle a calibrated amount for increased ground clearance. Ha, ah, look at that. Is that cool or what? So if you got that, if you got an off-road switch, you flip your off-road switch and they go. Remember that? That's cool, isn't it? I mean, when you start thinking about it, that's neat stuff. And uh, when it's activated on ride control vehicles, it still it switches the shocks to hard, in spite of the fact that it has raised it up. So now you got your shock actuator position. There's a motor and there's a switch. I've already told you a little bit about that, so we're not going to go into all that. Um, under what two conditions does the air suspension warning indicator usually come on? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. All right, let me zip on through this. Let's see where we can stumble across this right here. Um, all right. Uh, on ride control systems with reverse actuators, uh, the suspension control controls uh, hard and soft ride relays that provide the shock error. So if someone used relays to do it, you know? And the relays got power and ground alternatively, change of polarity of the signal sent to the actuator. You know, like we did on our, on our, motor, on our board before we do our light back and forth? It's the same kind of deal. You got relays. You remember how to wire that up, Brandon? Well, go show us. No, not really. But uh, that's something that you need to remember because there's a lot of these computer systems use that kind of deal to set up. You got your common terminal on your relays going to both legs on the motor, and then you got a power and you got a ground hooked up to your normally open, normally closed. When you operate the relay, just one of the relays will switch states and it'll cause it to run one way. You operate the other relay, it switches and it goes the other way. You can remember that if you start thinking about it. And uh, it's fairly uh, easy to understand that uh, whenever you've done it, you know, when you've wired that, that board up over there. The four-wire actuator is a reversible DC motor. We talked about that some, too. Two-wire actuator is known as our solenoid. So if the solenoid's off, the shock's in hard damping. When it's on, the shock's in soft damping. So it actually is a, a spring-loaded thing, I guess. And then you got three-wire actuators, and uh, one of them it actually is the, the switch is going to be, uh, there's you got a ground, and then you got your... Uh, Operation of the motor. Uh, let me let me let me draw that for you because you're going to need to know how a three wire actuator works. Uh, watch this now. Okay, you got a motor in your actuator right here, right? And you got a ground right here, and you got your switch. Now you got power coming in. So that's a three wire actuator, right? This right here just gets ground from right there. So when you're going to drive the motor and it doesn't need reverse polarity if it's a spring-loaded thing. It's actually going to use that ground. It's going to be hardwired all the time. And this switch is going to tell it what state it's in, if it's in soft or hard. Um, that's how that works on there. Uh, so you remember I told you, one of the things I told you earlier was uh, if you've got an air suspension switch shut off, now listen, pay attention to, to two. Uh, if you've got an air suspension switch shut off, you're going to see that light come on. If you got a problem with your air suspension system, the light's going to come on. That's the two situations there. Uh, okay, the suspension uh, uh, control strategy is to do what? What is the air suspension control strategy, basically, if you put it in a, um, in a nutshell? If somebody was going to tell you that, 
If somebody's going to explain to you what the, in other words, if you were going to tell somebody, they say, why do you need air suspension on a car anyway? Is it it's so that it'll ride smoother? Brandon? What have I been telling you guys all this time? What's the other one? Other answer? Wait, no, wait. Oh, it's uh, air suspension shut off or a problem with the system. You know, if you got you got a concern with the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the what is the air suspension module strategy? What is the what is it programmed to do? Right Bingo! Hey, look at that. He got that. Control the right hat. That's not a hard question, is it? Okay. What? Com uh, okay, I haven't got to that yet. But what controls power to the compressor motor? The compressor relay controls power to the compressor motor. And uh, some of them, it's either a solid state, funky looking uh, thing that looks vaguely similar to. Uh, it, it looks vaguely. Some of them look vaguely similar to this, except it'll have cooling fins on it, and it's got several connectors there, and then it'll or it can be a regular relay. Right. All right. Bear with me. We'll be there you go. All right. Um, all right, then. Air solenoids. Talk about those. Uh, they're placed in the airlines to control airflow to and from the springs and shocks, and they're normally closed and they're spring-loaded. So, not a big deal there. Um, and then you got... Uh, Air spring solenoids are installed into the spring. Some of them are in line with a line coming to both sides of them. Some are right in the spring. The one I showed you earlier, they're right in the spring. And you got gate solenoids. The gate solenoid provides air pressure isolation to the left or right side of the shocks of the vehicle. And that eliminates the transfer of air from one air shock to the other. Incidentally, some of these Pontiac Montana vans, how I many of you guys have ever put air shocks on a vehicle? Just air shocks. I mean, I'm talking about just shocks that have a boot on them. And when you put air in them, it raises the vehicle up. I had some on my car before, but I didn't put them on. Yeah, well, they actually got a little, you can run an airline over here to your bumper, mm -hmm. and it you can actually, up. yeah, you just got a little thing, just like on a yeah. tire, and when you push the air in there, it raises the car up. Yeah, it's you know, or you can let it back down. That's pretty cool. But uh, the Mon Pontiac Montana's, the air suspension on them, the, and General Motors, what they opted to do was put air shocks with a compressor and a ride out sensor instead of using airbags. Mm -hmm. Now, they were... Uh, didn't that act as the spring? They basically just control the ride out, but you had regular springs. That makes sense. Yeah. That's the way General Motors should. And I think that was smarter, <laughs> to be honest with you. It really was. Uh, but uh, I'm mean, a Judy McLean's van used to. And let me let me let me hit you with this. If you ever hear the air air compressor having to kick off and on a lot when nobody's doing changing that anything, air, you got an air leak somewhere. Got to find it. You can't put air shots in front of the car. Anymore. If you want to, you can. If they make them. You put them on air field too. As you know, you know them hydraulic and them bouncing cars. You, know? <laughs> you, know, you can do whatever you want to. That's pretty funny. Okay, you got fill solenoids. They're going to connect the output of the compressor assembly to the spring shocks or struts, and the fill solenoids energize along with the other two. And the airflow to the spring shocks and the struts can be changed, and they're electronically operated and controlled by the control module. Uh, they're integrated into the air spring, and they're for shocks and. and uh, they're in the airline, you know. Okay, so you got a vent solenoid built into the motor. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Over here. The vent solenoid. The vent solenoid is right here. The vent solenoid's here. You notice if you'll notice, there's wires going to it, and that's where that thing actually. Did. Incidentally, this big thing right here with these two orange lines, that is your filter. That is the filter. And there's going to be a question concerning this, this in a minute. You can you can take that filter off and look at it if you want to. But there is a question concerning that. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. But, um, but anyway, that thing, it doesn't really, if you ever have the idea you're going to use one of them to pump up a tire, you know, you just be waiting a while because it's, got, it's not going to work all that fast. All right, so control module determines when it's lowering. Now let's see if we can find another question here. Technician A says, damping shocks and struts operate in the same manner. Um, technician B says, damping shocks and struts operate differently. All right. Which one is it? Technician A? Technician A? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sure you're right. You're right. No, wait a minute. Hold on just a minute. I got confused by my own answer to you. Remember that? Okay. Let me give you this right here. Um, Dampen shocks and struts operate in the same manner. That's basically the way that goes. Um, air suspension system dryer 
is a regular maintenance item according to Technician A. Uh, technician B says, air passes back through the dryer during venting. Who is right about that? Now, if you look at, uh, and I need to, I should have probably covered that a little earlier and I dropped the ball on that. Uh, it's got a desiccant. So, what's his desiccant? You know what desiccant is? You know what a desiccant is? Anybody know? Have you ever seen desiccant? What does it look like? Stuff that's in the bottom of beef turkey bags and stuff like that that they tell you do not eat. Yeah, yeah, or in a pill bottle. You see them little pouches that say don't eat, mm -hmm. and you that's desiccant. Or it's in your air conditioner, your dryer, your air conditioner dryer. You'll see little uh, things with desiccant in there. I got one that's cut open. Um, I'm talking about this dryer right here. It's got two little, see these little balls of desiccant here that are in there, Tim. Let me show them to the camera. See the little balls of desiccant that's coming out of that dryer? Now that's what that is. It actually, and that's in here. That's it. He, he broke the dog on. He broke it off. He goes, no. Now you got to glue it back on the plastic one. What did you do? Take a screw out? Yeah. Oh, brother. I knew that was going to happen. you got to turn that. You don't just pull it out. you got to turn it and all that. Now, he doesn't ruin it. That's what it was. Give him a screwdriver and he changed the world. <laughs> Yeah, put that back together because I'm still trying, to, still trying to use it for a trainer there. Okay, uh, so let's keep going. Uh, just about here. Anyway, that technician B was the right answer on 7. Techni but you, it's not a regular maintenance item. You don't change it out. It just comes with a compressor. You can't just you buy a dryer. I'm 7 or 8. I'm 7. 7 is the one I'm talking about where you can't just buy the dryer. you gotta got to buy the whole compressor to go with it. See, like I can't just buy a dryer from that, that, that thing he just busted. We have to look back together. Uh, Mm -hmm. number eight on one. Uh, eight? Yeah. Uh, the acceleration signal is provided by the PCM to the suspension control module to activate the suspension to do what? What's it doing now? We're, are we talking about ride height or are we talking about field? Yeah, we only got eight questions. Hmm. Our number, number eight is the air suspension dryer. Which one is talking about? Number eight is air suspension dryer. Wow, I wonder how that happened. Well, I'm going to ask y'all some more questions anyway because y'all can suck it up. How about that? All right. Some air suspension system use a blank input for height adjustment and kneel strategies. How does it know when to squat down? And on the low. Transmission input. That's what that, and then a two-wire actuator, the shock is, if it's a two-wire actuator is off, it's in a hard damping mood. So they want it to be a hard damping. They don't want you to think you have hard suspension when you don't turn it hard, basically. It's a safety thing, I guess. All right. Is everybody happy with this? You got, you understand, do you understand air suspension now a lot better than you did before? You got that? Now, I will tell you this. All of these uh, all of these handouts and everything that these tests are coming from, you're probably going to see some stuff on your uh, final about that, but they're in that computer over there on the left in the folder that says... Um, you know, the shared folder on that computer over there. So you can see those. And the cool thing about having an Adobe Acrobat is you can do a search for particular words. You do that on, everybody know how to do that on Adobe? It's got a binoculars up there at the top. You type the word in and you hit that and it takes you to the next place in the document where the word is. All right. Now, everybody, anybody got any more questions about air suspension? I can tell you all are really excited about this today. You would be pretty excited about it if you had to work on a few of them darn things, I can tell you that. And it will happen sooner or later. You'll have to work on air suspension or program drive control or something like that. And um, that we're pretty well concludes what we're doing here today. Everybody's got something solid they're going to have to do out of today. Now, what are you going to be doing? Blazer. You're going to be working on the blazer. What are you going to be doing? You're not going to be doing, you're not going to be standing around with your hands in your pockets looking at the air with your mouth open. If you can't find a car to work on or a worksheet to do, you should sweep the floor or mop or clean off a workbench or something like that. Something constructive. Or you should pull a vehicle in and just work on it. You know what I mean? Anyway, there are some uh, some aggravating engine work over here that I can have you do. If, if I see you standing around, I'm subject to give you an aggravating engine job to do. So make sure you stay busy, okay? And Jeremy Etheridge is... Uh, mm -hmm. Dad's truck is in here, and I need some work done on it. And so, uh, you know, if I, if I see you twiddling your thumbs, you're subject to get handed wrenches and get put to work on the F-150 over there. Now, you and Wes are doing the transmission thing. 
right. Yeah. All right. And Tyler? Four cheese. And uh, now, Matt, be Archie, you, or you got that thing by the tail? I just had bolts loose on these. Though. Yeah. You might want to hang by and help Archie. This is a dry blind thing. Right. And you're going to benefit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but nobody needs to elbow everybody else out of the way and do the whole job. You know what I'm saying? You ever, does that to me. you ever work anybody? You ever work with anybody like that? You get to the point where they elbows you out of the way and do the whole job. Uh, by the way, you guys get that torch and put it back in that cage over there. Of course, I'm going to have to open it in the shop. All right.